I like the retro styling. It reminds me of an old school boombox. Hey everybody, Jamie here, and in this video we're gonna take a look at the Rock Pals PS500. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, my name is Jamie and I've been living the traveling lifestyle since 2012, and I've used several different power stations over the years. I've also installed solar systems from the ground up from you know lead acid batteries agms gels uh, lithiums i say that to say that i've worked with a lot of solar panels installing electronics and seeing how all the pieces fit together and today we're going to take a look at this guy here the uh, ps500 and in this review we're going to talk about the good the bad what to uh, take note of when you're looking to buy a power station. Why would you even need a portable power station? We're gonna cover all of it. Let's get to it. So what is a portable power station? For me, I first saw these things hit the market when I was a kid years ago. They were lead acid, little portable stations that usually had a flashlight and some jumper cables on them, a 12 volt socket, cigarette lighter on them. At first they didn't have the 110 outlets, but then over time they started putting inverters on them and, and putting 110 outlets on them. Most everything uh, when they first came out were modified sine wave. My first portable power station was made by Goal Zero. I bought in 2012 and it did not work worth a lick. I think it was a nickel cadmium battery. I had to keep sending it back the new one wouldn't work. The industry has come a long way since then. Uh, over the years, as a reviewer, I've received a lot of these different power stations and had a chance to kind of check Today, them out, we're talking test more them, power see how stations. they perform, see how they charge in different environments. Why would you need a portable power station? These things are handy for things like camping trips, power outages, temporary power outages in your home, or if you're thinking about setting out into the traveling lifestyle and you want something to power your handheld electronics, your cell phone, your tablet, your laptop, things like that. A little power station would be perfect for that. You want to probably companion it with a solar panel, but they do make cords. This one has both cords that charge from a cigarette lighter and 110 right out of the box in this. You're going to get two different power cords to do that, but it also charges different ways. It charges through solar panels, through these Anderson connectors. Anderson connectors is just a name for these little connections that you see here. They come in different sizes. In this case, there's not a lot of uh, current going through this, so a small one is appropriate. That's why this is small. You, you've got some for winches that are like that big. Uh, it's got a, a DC in for your cigarette lighter and your 110. It's got two DC outs. Let's, let's keep talking about the ends. The Anderson connectors to charge it with a solar panel or an array of solar panels. You've got your DC in, which you would use to charge it with your cigarette lighter or a 110 outlet, such as in your house. Or if you're at Starbucks or something and you wanna just go in and have a cup of coffee and work, you could probably find an outlet there. And then also you can charge it from this USB-C 45 watt uh, outlet that's over here kind of off by itself this both sends power out at 45 watts or it sends power in if you have let's say a 45 watt laptop uh, cord for your apple or a lot of the pcs have them now you could use that to power this, just make sure that all the wattages and everything line up and it's gonna be okay to do that. But this will take power in, that's the point I'm making. So there are your power ins. Now let's talk about the, the power out. You've got two DC 12 volt outs right here. So you can charge two different things at the same time. They're the same, but if you wanna charge two things at the same time, you can do it or power two things at the same time, you can do it. You've got your 12 volt cigarette lighter and in this case, they give you a little plug to keep rain and debris out. Earlier models I've seen didn't have this, so that's kind of a nice upgrade. You've got two 3.1 amp USB-C outlets here, a quick charge 3.0 outlet here, a 45 watt USB-C 
output or input we talked about. And you've got your two 110 AC ports. Now, what these are different. What's different about these than everything else that you see here is that in order to run these, an inverter that's built inside of this needs to power up. And so when it powers up, it uses more power in this system than uh, any of these other things. So if you can avoid using the 110, you want to avoid using the 110. If you got to do it, you got to do it. But if you have a laptop that you could get either plug the USB-C cord in or get a 12 volt cord off of say Amazon or whatever, go to the manufacturer, they all sell them. Or if you have a CPAP machine, it's better to run your CPAP machine from a 12 volt plug. It's gonna use less power. So we try not to use these 110s, but it's giving you two pure sine wave outlets if you, if you need to have them. And so what is, and also by the way, not for nothing, but if you, you only have two here, you could plug a plug strip into one of these and be a you know 110 outlet millionaire. You could do that if you needed to. What's the deal with pure sign? Well, you, you hear that sometimes and you're like, well, what is pure sign? Well, pure sign just means that there's a wave, that the electrical wave that comes out of this is pure rather than modified. Modified is like a square wave that still puts out electricity, but it can be harmful for electron certain electronics like say a microwave, a uh, blender, a refrigerator. If you've got a low draw refrigerator uh, and you have a modified sine wave inverter, it's probably not good for it. You don't see them that often anymore. Years ago when I first got into this, it was almost all modified sign with a few outliers that were pure and they were very expensive. Nowadays, it's the other way around. Almost everything is pure sine wave. Let's talk about the battery chemistry inside this power station. This is a 500 watt unit at 12 volts that's 40 amp hours of lithium ion power that's delivering to these ports the lithium ion is touted as being 100% uh, up to 500 cycles and then dropping down to 80% which would put this at 32 uh, amp hours after 500 cycles. Now it's hard to determine what constitutes a cycle. Say you go out and use this for the weekend but you don't discharge it all the way then you recharge it. Well that's not really a cycle. So there is some ambiguity in how to determine how long this battery lasts. There are some out there with lithium iron phosphate and some are going to argue that that's going to be longer life and therefore a better unit. Technically the lithium iron phosphate are a longer use deeper cycle battery. I just don't want to get too much caught into the fine minutia considering that this is going to be good for years and then just drop to 80 percent 32 amp hours and i have lithium ion cordless batteries that i've had for over 10 years and i'm still using them lithium ion they don't even make these anymore 11 19 2011 11 years ago. Get out of here with that lithium ion nonsense. I were to charge those batteries up and only get a little bit of life out of them, I'd throw them away. I wouldn't still be using them. So I just don't want to get too caught up in splitting hairs over chemistry of lithium ion over lithium iron phosphate. This is a great unit, units with Lithium iron phosphate are great units. Let's, let's base our decision on the overall merit of a device and not the specific battery chemistry within the lithium family. All right, with that, let's go over and charge this thing on my solar panels and I'm going to plug it in, set it for, we're gonna look at it, it's 57%. We're gonna plug it in for one hour and see what we come up with and see what it would take to get this thing to should i take should i take it down to 50 percent? would that be easier to do the math maybe i should do that let me discharge this down to 50 percent and then do it let's do it that way 
I've got the 10 inch fan on high and the TV on pulling 55 watts we're at 50% let's go plug this into some solar for an hour <laughs> looks like there's clouds this is gonna be so unscientific all right let's go plug it in and uh, see how it charges in the solar So after one hour, my very unscientific test came out to be, here's my boom box pose, 63% from 50%, so that's 13% that we got in the one hour. Now we didn't get a fair shake with the sun because some clouds moved in a little bit during that hour, but we're not always going to get a fair shake when it comes to the sun and clouds and the weather so i think it's accurate to factor that in if we were to multiply 13 percent by eight hours that comes out a little over 100 percent does that mean that it would charge fully in eight hours it's really hard to say you know th this is so unscientific i just want to give you an idea of of what happened so i plugged in a 100 watt panel i had two but i tried both of them and i didn't get more power in this case when i plugged both of them in so i just used the one that took the anderson connectors and we got uh we got up there in the 80 watts the the mid to high 80 watts on that so that's pretty impressive with my solar panels that i have on my roof and on the side of my bus you know for me to get 80 90 percent that's about, you know, I don't know that I've ever gotten 100% on uh, my side panels, for instance. Those are the ones that are easy for me to measure. So, in conclusion, if you need yourself a little portable power station in the case of a power outage, or if you want to go camping on the weekends, or you want to try out the traveling lifestyle, but you don't want to commit to an entire solar installation up front, I would say that the Rock Piles 500 is going to do the job up to 500 continuous watts. Any more than that? We probably need to look at a full-blown installation anyway, or something that's way heavier than this. A lot of things to like about the Rock Piles 500. It's coming in at the time of this video at $415 on the Rock Piles website. I'll put an affiliate link down in the description for Amazon if you'd like to pick one of these up. Thanks for watching. See you on the next upload.